Come on, guys. You were so close. Hey, guys. This is my review for Assassin's Creed. The latest video game based movie to totally cock it up. This movie... I can probably say it's closest to Warcraft, is that it's a film that really closely follows the lore. The story's kind of weak, uh, so are the actors in certain parts, but the lore is good. Assassin's Creed is the movie based off of the popular running Ubisoft series, and I've been a big fan of the Ubisoft series for a long time, up until Unity. Unity was a piece of garbage that I'll never want to play again, and I didn't even finish it because I thought that was a piece of shit, and I'm never wanting to put my money back, and I fail so pissed off for getting that game. Anyways, but every game up until Unity, I have played and enjoyed immensely, even 3, which I... Th anyways, so Assassin's Creed actually takes place in a time that they haven't touched yet, really, which was the Spanish Inquisition. And we get introduced to Michael Fassbender's character in present day, and he's actually pretty good of a character. We actually get a lot of traits from him, some really amazing acting at the beginning of him, but then it starts to kind of float away, as does really the reason for this movie. We see the director, Justin Cruiser, I totally got that wrong, but anyways, he has worked with both Michael Fassbender and Marion Coltaire before on Macbeth, and if you've watched Macbeth, you'll notice he likes to use smoke. A lot. And he does it with this movie, but it just comes off so well. Like, probably he gave half of his crew emphysema, but it's totally worth it because he just uses smoke and colored visuals in a way that just, it's never, the film is never not good to look at. However, there are parts of the, the film that really choose to go into these different directions that you really wouldn't enjoy. Now, basically, when you've played the Assassin's Creed series, do you really, really enjoy being in present day? No? Well, this movie does. Mind you, it does make sense in a, in a way. If anything, the real-life story actually makes more sense than any of the previous game's real-life counterparts. All the Desmond Miles crap does ever. It honestly works better than any of those games did before. However, the consistency of going back in time does not really add up. In the sense of how close it is to the game, it, it makes sense. There's a lot of stuff that this film is following the video game pretty well. However, the first two times that he goes back in time, they really aren't there for anything other than an action scene. They have really no consequences to the story. Like they're cool to watch, but in reality, they really mean nothing. So he's supposed to be taking... Basically, what they want Michael Fassbender to do is what they wanted Desmond Miles to do in the first game, which is find the Apple of Eden. Okay, so as you remember in that game, they put you in the last level, but you weren't synchronized properly, so they put you all the way back in the beginning, you learned everything, and that's called the progression of a video game. They do almost the same thing with the movie, except they don't explain why they put him in random parts. They don't explain anything, really. The, the first scene is like, why did you choose that one? Why it's so specific about that first part that we need to be there for? You don't really get it. The only time that the past actually matters, really, is the third scene. And, like I said, while the past is probably the more entertaining part of the movie, it doesn't matter as much as the present day, which I didn't mind that aspect, but the fact that we have a bunch of characters that are in the Abstergo facility along with him, and we really never know their names besides Black Dude, Chinese Girl, and uh, Shrimp, uh, we don't really get to care for them. We don't almost, almost even care for... Michael Fassbender, we have this interesting relationship between him and Marianne Coltaire because her motivations are not as clear-cut as all the Templars are. She's kind of on the fence with it. But the thing is, this aspect, which is, could have been probably one of the more saving graces of the film, is totally tossed into the dumpster in the final part of the film. And that's the thing. This film doesn't start off well. It has a really kind of sloppy opening, but then it starts to pick itself up and fix itself, and then every, all the pieces just fall on the floor, and then they don't even bother to fix it up in the final half. Everything after the final pa p uh, piece to the past is pointless. And uh, speaking of, all the, pi the parts where he goes into the past and they're doing fight scenes... For some reason, they really thought it was evident that they had to go and cut back to Michael Fassbender doing the motions on the weird-ass animus thing. You know how disjarring that is and how pointless that is? I don't care what he's doing in the 
future. I want to see the fight scene. You're totally ruining the flow of the fight scene. So, in the end, Assassin's Creed is a visually good film. There are some good parts to it, and if you're an Assassin's Creed fan, you will enjoy it. Except you're going to start to notice very early on the cracks show and then they get bigger and bigger and then they fall to pieces. And what could have been a really good, a finally a good video game based movie and it just falls to pieces. I'm still going to say the best video game based movie is Lara Croft Tomb Raider. I'll say that. It's still the most solid one out of all of them. Anyways, Assassin's Creed gets a 3 out of 7 for me mainly because I have to appreciate the visuals the choreography when it wasn't ruined with these stupid cuts to the past and then the attention to the lore it's kind of like warcraft warcraft was the same thing for me anyway guys that's all for me i uh, hope you enjoyed this review oh by the way uh to whoever was in that theater with me why the fudge did you bring your two-year-old what is assassin's creed apparently a good daycare service that was really weird it's probably the weirdest part of the whole movie anyway guys that's all for me See you guys next time.